Uh, right, so we're here with uh, Ross Billum and, and Dan O'White. Thanks very much for doing this for you. Um, uh, as the fans, we all want to get to know the new squad of players that we've got. Uh, we've seen Dano quite a bit in the under-18s and everything. Uh, and it's your first time in senior football for in the first team for Durham Town. Yeah. Uh, Ross, we've seen you a couple of times playing for the first team as a dual registered last year. Uh, so just a little bit about yourself. So Ross, uh, I know you've played at various clubs around Norfolk and you started at Akel when you were 15. So start us there, a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I was obviously playing junior football um, just with friends and had a call via my dad and um, asked if we could sort of take a look at Akel which was a bit of a shock really um, at that age but I was quite a big lad anyway so yeah it was all right um, played helped them out for the last three games and um, quite enjoyed it and I was quite surprised um, at the level compared to kids football and like how more physical it was, obviously, and yeah. that's obviously what Dan is finding now, stepping up to this level, really. So, when you, is that what you found when you uh, left under 18s and D's? Oh, yeah, when I played my uh, first game last year, um, I was blown after 25 minutes because it was just so quick pace compared to U18 football. Which game was that? Was that uh, the, the Sporting Cal Sporting Cal Cal yeah, the 6 5 yeah. game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I'm getting used to it now, which is yeah. better. But Stronger yeah. and fitter and yeah. able to keep up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And keeping up with the banter from the uh, first team players as well. Oh, yeah. what you're about. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, you went for, uh, to Norwich Union, who are now CBS, aren't Yeah, they? so we, I, was, I was there for two years. Um, and that was good because I played with players like um, Tom Casey. Um, and there's another lad there, Paul Hartle, who won the FA Vars. Mm -hmm. And they were getting on like 38, 39. Um, and Hartley was probably over 40 then, still in really good shape. And that was really good for me at that age to get to play with someone like that. Mm -hmm. um, and they brought me along really well, to be fair. Um, and then after that, I, I ended up getting a call uh, to Fetford and made a step up pretty quickly at 18. So how did they manage to snare you then? Did they sort of... Um, I think it's through the Sunday side I played for, to be fair. Um, yeah. That was in my um, first game was against Deerham in yeah. a pre-season friendly. Yeah. Um, and I loved it. And I was quite surprised how easily I made the step up. Yeah. Um, I've always been quite physical and I found that was better for me playing at a higher level. Yeah. Um, and I really enjoyed that. I mean, the travelling at that age was a bit tough because I've obviously just started driving. Like yeah, I was going to say, has. Norwich to Thetford's a bit of a track, isn't yeah. it? So where, where was your base then? I was just based in Spryson, so pretty much city centre. Oh, okay. Um, but there was um, a lot, like the same of us, there's a group of people we just shared lifts with and that was fine. But it's just the getting out there when like driving on your own and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. Obviously, Dano does Desert here, so he's obviously fine coming here, but we share lifts and stuff and... Yeah, that's the best way to get around it, especially when you've just passed your test. And that's what you first had your first uh, trouble with injury was at Thetford, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so I, I played the whole, pretty much the full season, and I think that was um, four or five games before the end of the year, and I ruptured my cartilage in my knee. Mm. Um, and to be honest, <laughs> I had it operated on, and they, they sort of told me I needed about eight months rehab, and I was back within 12 weeks. You feel you came back a bit quick? Far too quick. Mm. Um, and I'd recommend that you didn't do that. Because I <laughs> sort of struggled with injury until I was about 28 after that, if I'm completely honest. But you went back to Norwich Union? Yeah, the, um, the they changed CBS. to Spixworth by then because obviously yeah, the old, they used to play at Pine Banks um, mm -hmm. and that got changed. Mm -hmm. um, they had development on that, so they moved to Spixworth. Still with the same manager and they were obviously happy to have me back. Yeah, But I just couldn't. Like even like going to the cinema and stuff like that, I couldn't sit in one place for mm. sort of like two hours. So traveling weren't really for me at that time. So, yeah. and obviously a load of my mates were still there. So I was happy to do that. Yeah. And you stayed there for how long? Uh, was it five years or something like that? Yeah, five or six yeah. years. And to be fair, we, we done really well. And defensively, we were brilliant. We just lacked a goal scorer. Like we think we finished second like four years on the trot. Yeah. Won the Mummery Cup and stuff like that. But, yeah, we just lacked that cutting edge. So how old were you at that stage then? Early 20s, would it have been? 
I went back when I was 19 and then I sort of left there around 24 or something like that. Yeah. Um, and moved on to Long Stratton. Because you were, so, you know, you're already playing step four football. How old are you? 17. Eight, 17 already. Yeah. yeah, so you haven't had, you haven't had the experience no, playing yeah. in well, local football. Well, last year I was started in Angling Comprem. Yeah. And then obviously a big step. Yeah, you played for Dussie for a little Dussie while. Dussie and then Rocks and Resies and then. Yeah. Big step. That's a massive thing for him to be doing that at his age because yeah. it, it's just brilliant to get used to the physicality of it because, I mean, this league we're in is a lot more physical. Than I was going to say, I don't see many 17-year-olds in the opposition. No. I mean, do they give you a lot of stick on the ground, the, the, uh, on the pitch, the opposition? No, not really, because I don't really think they... Oh, we do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. probably my own teammates do. <laughs> Plenty of stick. Charge, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I don't really think the opposition fully know because... If I have my beard grown, I'll probably look about 20, so they'll probably just think. Can you zoom in on that? <laughs> well, I can't I see your beard. Really. Light's coming on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that. we give him enough st- like stick. Yeah. So And obviously the opposition don't know about his butler and stuff mm. like that. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. What's his name again? Chives. Chives. Yeah. Don't have a butler. He, he or does. a gardener. Or a chauffeur. <laughs> he oh, you're the chauffeur. Yeah, I'm the chauffeur. <laughs> He's the chauffeur, yeah. Not on the payroll, unfortunately. So no. obviously we'll sort that out with your dad, yeah. won't we? Yeah. <laughs> So after that, you went to Long Stratton, you said? Yeah, I went to Long Stratton. Is that where you met um, James and Jake? Yeah, obviously Jake was there when I first started and then Ben Rose sort of just sort of come from nowhere really and I was like, who's this kid? And at training and he was just smashing balls past the left, right and centre yeah. and I was like, what is going on here? Yeah, um, yeah, I, I did enjoy my time there. Um, that was originally under Potter. Um, Obviously, Toasty's been a bit with management with him and yeah. stuff like that, and it was a good time. And we lost a lot of players, and I stayed to rebuild like the the youth coming through, and they're yeah. the players that are there now. And obviously, Jake have come through with the youth, yeah. Um, and then towards the end, James come through, mm-hmm. and uh, we sort of struck up quite a good relationship with me setting up goals for him. Cause he's so fast. Well, on that, you 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 got two quite unique records at. Um Long strat and you had yeah. the record for the most clean sheets in a row, yeah. nine. Yeah. And also you scored thirteen goals in one season, didn't I you? I did, yeah. Yeah, I I when I sort of took on a lot more responsibility when um Ross left, mm. um, Racy came up from the reserves and made me captain and obviously the young lads didn't really fancy taking penalties and stuff, so I stepped up and took them and yeah, thirteen goals in one season. Some from outside, like some inside my own half and I imagine when you take a penalty, you're not one of these place it delicately into the corner no, and it, uh, chip it. I've got a few techniques. It just, <laughs> d- 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 just depends on how early the keeper goes, really, and yeah. how confident I feel. Like I've always said to the young lads, like if you're not confident, just smash it down the middle because yeah. it takes a brave goalkeeper to stand down the yeah, middle. Because yeah. yeah, if right. you don't dive, you get absolutely slaughtered for it. So. so what we haven't seen much on the first team, as I saw it at Brantham, you, you let one go, didn't you? You've got a, a rocket on you as well. You, do you like a... A drive from distance because you have got a powerful strike on you, haven't you, Dan? Um, yeah, I mean, it can sometimes go over the bar, but I hope, <laughs> I, I hope it usually goes <laughs> in the back of the net. Um, yeah, not against me, but yeah. not in training. And sometimes in training. Well, you've got to get to 14 goals in a season to beat Ross's record, yeah. don't you? Now, so. I'll do that. <laughs> Happy days. That's good news. We've got yeah. a goal scoring, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, Johnny doesn't score enough to be fair, does he? <laughs> no, 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 no. You'll get, you'll, get, you'll get off the duck at some stage, yeah. don't you? So after um, uh, Long Stratton, the, the, you still had the recurring injury, yeah, right? and it was becoming problematic at that stage. And you, did you have an operation at that? Was it? That, yeah, that I, I had an operation towards the end of that spell at Stratton. That was like sort of pre-season before my last year there, um, and I'd sort of put football first for a good couple of seasons, really, and hmm. not been able to get in the gym, sort of play on a Saturday and then hobble about until the next Saturday and. I really shouldn't have done that because the state I got in, I think I'd I always used to do like a lot of weights and stuff like that, yeah. and that just turned to fat, and I'd, I'd let myself go really. Um, and I had a, I was lucky enough that I got put up the waiting list because of a contact via cricket, <laughs> Tim Shepherd, and yeah, yeah he um, got me in for my operation, and then I trained really hard. Yeah. And I lost four stone in like four months, yeah. and came back, and the pla- my mates didn't even recognise me. Um, pre-season and yeah. that just made things so much easier like more, how more athletic I was and so you had to actually lose quite a lot of weight did you say well, like, was that when you lost your four, that spell where you lost four yeah, stone yeah four it? stone um, mm. that just 
obviously Pizarro had that recurring in, knee injury. They just said at the end of the day, being 17, 18 stone isn't going to help. Like the lighter you yeah. are, the better it is. So mm. currently I'm about 13 and a half stone. Um, and I haven't had any issues with it since. Yeah. I mean, that's not very often that you see someone play with no cruciate ligament, but no. I haven't had one since I was 18. Um, and yeah, that's brilliant after that. And I just found things so much easier, like yeah. reactions are so much quicker and yeah. almost like the game is in slow motion. Yeah. Is it handy having someone who's got that sort of experience of recovery? Have, have you suffered much with injury, Dan? I know um, you're quite young still, but have you? Yeah, I, I did t tear my quad, and yeah. um, I still get problems with that sometimes, but yeah. I did that probably about six years ago now. and I, to, oh, so just, you're, you, You've still got lots of time to yeah, recover, because you were in your 20s when most yeah. of your problems were, weren't you? Yeah. But, I mean, it hasn't hurt in a while, so, I mean, I get little niggles here and there. Yeah, I think that should just Wait, men, men's tomorrow. football. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> at least it doesn't go in the nets with Ollie Stone, though. So he's yeah. going to be quite injury free from that. Yeah. Uh, but, so after you recovered, you, you spent about six months in the gym, and you got back into a really good state. So you did contemplate retiring at one stage, didn't you? I I did actually. So how retire. old were you when you were uh, contemplating that, Rob? Was that at that period? Was it? Um, no, so I played another season with Stratton after that and um, prolapsed two of my discs in my back mm -hmm. and developed sciatica really bad and yeah. I couldn't even get out of bed some days so mm -hmm. I sort of let them know that and obviously announced that I wouldn't play anymore because I generally couldn't see it, like I was mm -hmm. in that bad of shape and I couldn't even stand upright and stuff like that. So then you got a call from Halston? Yeah, um, so I had um, obviously seeing chiropractors stuff like that and I got back in the gym mm -hmm. and just started strengthening my back and stuff like that and got a call through from Halston and I was obviously there's like Scotty Roberts there who I'd played with when I was a kid and he's like mate anyway you're going to come back and play because obviously we were trying to get you before you got him. Was just the manager at that stage was he? No so Gussie had tried to sign me at Halston before he'd come here mm -hmm. um, and Gussie had left that season I believe and Nicky Howell and Gangles oh, right, yeah. obviously yeah. you know Nicky well. Yeah, um, yeah so they got me in, got me over and said, um, and I thought, to be fair, there's quite a lot of big characters in that change room and I was surprised. And Lots I got of ex-Magpies as well. Very there, much, yeah. yeah. Obviously, yeah. Sam Bora. Um, Jake Anamo. Yeah, Ollie Ebbage. Yeah. Um, Scotty Roberts, mm -hmm. Nicky. Um, yeah, and I, I went over there and I absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. um, I can't thank the club enough. Like That sort of changed my career as such because if you look back at my record before that, like, Got sent off quite a few times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, poor attitude, and you know. So you said when you were injured, it was like a bit of a dark spell for you. Watching football, yeah. getting frustrated that you couldn't play. Obviously, you play cricket when you're not playing football. You couldn't do any of these things. So yeah. Things you're used to doing. Yeah. So tough. Am I, was it like was it? Yeah, it's like a reflection, really. Like I looked back with regret, not just because I sort of played beneath myself a bit. It mm -hmm. was just how much football I missed. Mm -hmm through getting suspended like yeah. because I didn't really miss any for injury because I'll play for anything but you think I've, I've missed at least a year yeah just by being a you know so what made you want to make this I know you played a couple of times for us last year what made you want to make the step up from uh, I know that Gus signed you I think didn't he this yeah. year but uh what made what did he say that made you want to come to a step four club rather than a step six, step six club well obviously we got promoted with Haas and so they're step, step five, five yeah. Um, which would have been a new challenge for me. Um, but Gussie came around and just said, look, you know, I've wanted you for a few years now. Um, you're the best about. That's mm -hmm. what he said to me. And he said, at the end of the day, you're not getting any younger. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do it, you need to do it now. Um, and I sort of agreed with him, really. I mean, it's not ideal timing when I've got a kid on the way in December. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. But uh, Hannah supports me and... My dad always said that, and he's my biggest critic, he just said, whenever you step up, mm -hmm. you you do it easily. Like, I think you could go a bit higher than that. But And they all support me, so I went for it. Um, and I'm glad I did, because obviously, shame that Gussie did leave, because he was sort of my in. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad like I've met Toasty, like mm -hmm. yourself and the fans and stuff like Martin that. Martin as well? Did you know Martin before? I knew Martin from Long Stratton, believe oh, okay. it or not. So yeah. he, that's when he first came on the scene as goalkeeper coach. So there's, and to be fair, out of the, the side, I probably have played against and with like Swifty and mm -hmm. played against Mo Henry and that for UEA. Yeah. And I think 
how tight knit we are now is because yeah. of that and because we've all sort of come from the same sort of background really yeah playing at the sort of lower league yeah but we could easily make the step up and i think that's pr been proven on the well, pitch this, yeah definitely yeah, it's a step up we've noticed it in the fans as, as fans in the stands and yeah. that uh, both of you actually we we saw you that we really started taking notice of dano in the fakenham game pre-season you were a lot of our, our guys man of the match that day. Mm -hmm. It was a good result. And uh, considering we didn't have any subs that day, yeah, you turned up and played full 90 minutes. Yeah. You and Sonil and, and all the other young lads who turned up that day. And, and for yourself, Ross, I mean, it's, it's like you've been playing step four constantly. We haven't, we, we don't think this is a step five or six goalkeeper that's come yeah. up. Because you, you've mentioned to us in the bar and that, that, you know, that, that the differences you've made in your game, safety first, yeah. making sure the ball's clear, punching it. Obviously, you've got a, a monster kick on you, which yeah. is it gives us uh, outlets going forward and that. I think it just suits me better, like mm. the more physicality, because like, I'm a big lad and I, I'm not scared of putting my body on the line and stuff. But yeah, like we said, like playing for Halston at step five, step six. Yeah. If I can catch the ball, I will, even though I'm under pressure, sort of thing. But yeah. at this this sort of level with with the big lumps you're facing. <laughs> yeah. Just get the ball clear at any cost, really, and take the whack and hope the referee gives you a foul, but they don't. And that takes pressure off the defenders, doesn't it? Mm. I mean, when it's literally gone over to you, now we've got uh, a front line that can hold the ball up a little bit as well, so yeah. the pressure's off you there. When, when you played against uh, Sporting Council last year, that, you said that was your first yeah, uh, proper. Durham yeah. first team, in, like, enter it into men's football. Um, do you, had you played in the Isthmian League? I can't remember. Um, yeah, not. I think I got like five minutes against Brentwood. Oh, okay. But yeah. So, it's, but the, how are you finding the physicality in this league? Is it what you expected? Because the um, Isthmian League is a little bit more technical. We, well, we think as fans from the side. To be fair, I expected to come in like just get like a, a knee into the thigh, or yeah. But I haven't yet. But I, I will probably will experience it. But I think the first ten minutes against Shepshed was a bit of an eye opener for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that geezer was quite quick. Yeah. yeah. Was that that guy Jono? His name was Jono or something as well. The, yeah, the one he's, he's, he's just on. left Shepshed, I believe. Yeah, yeah he was yeah. rapid. Yeah, he was a handful. Wasn't yeah. He? Yeah. About three foot five, but yeah. Nine, did, nine, nine pay something. <laughs> <but> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so um, how do you feel this squad's come? You, you touched on it already. How how do you feel of being partly both full time part of the squad for the first time? How, what, what's your opinion on each of you on how strong the squad are? Uh, we seem to have all positions covered from what I can see. Um, and the unity, you said a little bit about how you're all getting on. A little bit about that. What is, uh, is everyone's, you're coming from different areas of the country as well. Yeah. Yeah. People don't realise there's guys in Leicester and London, but there yeah. seems to be a really tight bond. I think it helps, office. like I said, with the links there, like obviously Swifty and that, that group that come from further away know each other as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know really where because I sort of we've been thrust together and we've been so busy we haven't really talked about stuff like that but yeah, yeah obviously Mo, Swifty, Henry all come from like UEA. Nathan as well was it? Yeah Nathan yeah. was yeah. there obviously Paul Neary behind the scenes mm -hmm. knows a lot about that um, I think Swifty's played with Rich before so obviously got Rich in and he's a massive asset yeah. like the yeah. size of the bloke you know. And it's good that it's good that we're on a roll now as well aren't we? Yeah. You know, the, the team's rolling on and, and uh, we've keeping clean sheets which you've said it's something you're quite proud of yeah. and, and we're scoring goals and, and we're generating points in the yeah. cup and, and in the league um, so what do you think we put a lot of focus on the youth team as well what what strong players are coming through from the youth team at the moment we don't I know Charlie's injured yeah. at the moment uh, we know Dano's here uh, is, what, what other ones would you have I to think highlight? you'd probably see Kai today yeah um, plays the game sort of fearless like he's yeah above his years which i like obviously that's what i was like when i was 15 like because obviously you get to play in then, yeah, yeah he, he'll hopefully do the nathan job today i believe mm -hmm. um and hopefully he has a storm as his birthday this week as well oh, good. so hopefully the cakes are decent <laughs> yeah. obviously i set the bar for my birthday with that didn't i yeah obviously you had some of that was decent like, lovely yeah lovely day um yeah um obviously charlie's been good Mm -hmm. um, I've been working with a goalkeeper and I think yeah he looked okay in the Brantham yeah. game I saw yeah held, he'll, he'll held it together in the penalty shootout you know, you know. yeah he'll be good yeah he's, we're going to work with him a little bit but he's 16 years old isn't he yeah. I believe yeah, so yeah it's very young still so is, is, is looking around Deezer because are you still part of the Deezer yeah, program second, yeah. and I know you help out with the youth team and coaching yeah. and just mentoring and stuff uh, do you think there's a the current crop who are like 15, 16 there's going to be future Durham players in there for sure 
Well, 100%. even the under eights that we went, <laughs> yeah. 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 we went uh, on Tuesday and had a kick about with the under eights and the under twelves, and there's some in there as well. So there's a young yeah. lad in there who's sort of gunning for my spot already, and I, was, yeah. I think it? he's got to be at least sixteen now. But <laughs> so I've got a couple of years left. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully. I mean, it, youth is drives this club, don't we? We all know that we, a lot of the players who are now playing around Norfolk and, and the ones who've gone on, uh, like Ashton Fox and that, who've yeah. gone on, youth is a massive part of this. And so it's good to hear that we've got uh, prospects coming through the youth set But what a lot of the fans don't know is you, like I said before, you were at Brantford helping out the goalkeeper there and you, you helped out with the under eights and the under twelves and you, you sort of lean in with the diesel lads a little bit. Is that something you keen to carry on with is it something you, yeah, you want to do because no one's asked you to do that have they you've, you volunteered well, to do that well Toasty said do you mind just coming up and have a look and I said well if you want to pick me up I'll come all the time like, <laughs> you know I don't, I don't mind doing that he said he was going to give me some money to do it but I said I don't need it like, yeah. because at the end of the day like I said to you before if I didn't have people like Paul Hartle and Tom Casey and stuff like that then mm-hmm. where would I be like because they could have just been like, oh, I don't really want 16 year old by me. Yeah. If you if you don't have people with experience who make you better as a player, yeah. You know, Toasty can do all he want to do with the coaching, but unless you get older players who are thereabouts and mm-hmm. been there, that gives you so much more confidence, I believe. So I'm happy to always help with the youth and stuff. Give back like a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I'm always happy to do that, as long as like when <laughs> when my my boy comes, he's not make me so tired and stuff like that like that <laughs> too. everyone's warning me about but yeah at least hasn't got to run up and down the line like you don't yeah. yeah. <laughs> well that's, that's, that's excellent thanks very much for that I mean um, as, as fans we're, we're you know like I said it's, it's like we've had a step four right back and goalkeeper that have just literally come from the same league and, and fitted in straight away is, uh, is there any message you want to give the fans while we're here as we're trying to drum up support we just Really appreciate like coming to the away games. Yeah. It's phenomenal. It's just, obviously, it's hard for you. Like we moan about the travelling, but mm-hmm. you boys come with us home and away, and yeah, and especially when the kids come up and do the mascot and stuff. And yeah, yeah. Always fist pump me behind the goal and stuff. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. Like giving me Harry Bears and stuff that like I shouldn't be eating really. But. And now we've got a man of the match system as well, yeah, and yeah. player of the month system coming in. Dodge, the, the dodgy decision generated. last week. About a month too late for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it is what it is. So I'm not well, bitter about it. A couple more clean sheets, you yeah. might yeah. get a presentation. Yeah, well. you never know. All right, well, thanks very much for joining us for us. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Nice one.